So let's talk about boycotts. Um, last couple of videos I've put up, hundreds and hundreds of, of replies and I appreciate every single one of you that takes the time out to reply and I do try my hardest to reply back to all of you guys. Um, a lot of you saying we should boycott the Emirates and boycott games. Um, now whilst I get the, the logic behind that, and I do because I've done it myself, um, until this season I'd only been to two or three games in the last six years because I was of an opinion that why should I give them my money? Why should I do that? They're not doing what I want them to do. So why would I spend out my hard earned money to go and, and give it to Arsenal Football Club who can't be asked to go and sort out all the problems on the pitch by buying players? But then this season, I thought about it and I thought, nah, boycott. Nah, it's not working because I didn't go last season other than to the FA Cup final um, and they've still taken the piss this summer. So I'm now of an opinion where I've come round slowly over the last few years to the fact that a boycott is not the answer. I'm just one person. Every one of you watching is one individual person. And I find that unless we got 20 30, 40,000 to boycott, it's completely irrelevant talking about a boycott. But then not only that, 30, 40,000, whatever, 50,000 boycott, there's another 50,000 waiting for tickets. So you've then got to try and convince 50,000 plus the 50,000 that have taken their tickets. That's now 100,000 people you've got to try and convince to stop going to a game. Never going to happen. Um, and if you did manage to get 100,000 people to stop going to games, there's probably more people waiting for tickets. So whilst it is a great idea, that sadly is all it is, is just a great idea. Um, I'm of an opinion now that there is so many people that want Wenger out. Um, and let's not get it twisted, there's more people that want Kroenke out. But as a very good friend of mine said the other day on a, um, a podcast, if you're a, um, a Kroenke out, you should also be a Wenger out. Because Wenger is basically Stan Kroenke's puppet. He's basically doing what Stan wants him to do. And he's been fully on board for 10 years. Um, obviously, when Stan Kroenke took over at the club, him and his people and the board of directors would have sat down with Arsene Wenger. And they would have said, this is the direction we're taking the club in. Are you with us? Or are you not with us? Well, Wenger was with them. Now, that's then gone on 10 years to today. In that 10 years, Wenger signed a few new contracts. So he's still on board. Um, this summer, he signed his latest contract. Again, they have meetings annually. They'll sit down and they'll discuss which way the club's going and how they performed in the previous year and what they can do better and their strategy. Yes, believe it or not, they have got one. Um, which we all find quite hard to believe, but they do have one. Um, so they would have had a meeting at some point at the back end of last season or after the season finished in this pre-season before he came out and signed where they would have talked about their plans for this season. Now, you've got the likes of David Ornstein, dubbed the Oracle, the mouthpiece of Arsenal Football Club. He's another puppet. This guy came out in the beginning of the off-season, the, the uh, transfer window, uh, pre-season, and he sat there and he said, Arsenal have got £150 million to go and spend on players. Now, the shit hit the fan the other night because we didn't sign anyone on deadline day. So guess who comes out now? The Arsenal PR puppet. He's come out, after saying this a few months ago, he's come out and said, Arsenal haven't got any money, he said that the day before deadline day and then a day after deadline day, he come out and said, because we signed Lacazette for say 50 million, let's round these figures up, 50 million, that left 100 million pounds. Alexander Lacazette and Said Kalasinac are on 200 grand a week each. 
that's about two, that's about 100 million pound in wages over the length of their contracts. So if you add that to the 50 million pound we signed Lacazette for, that's the 150 million pounds. Now, me, you, and anybody else watching this knows that is complete and utter bullshit, okay? We all know that we're the only club in the world that chat this much bollocks. You've only got to look at other Premier League clubs to know that that is bollocks. We're the only club in world football that are now coming out with statements as ridiculous as that about the wages was included in the transfer budget. Come on, man. This club turns over an absolute fortune. When we left the uh, sorry, when we left Highbury, the last season we were at Highbury, our wage bill, the percentage of that wage bill off of our total income that season was 77%. So we spent 77% of our um, income that season on player wages. Fast forward to today, it's now 57%. So the golf in profit has got bigger because we were spending 20% more all them years ago at Highbury than we are now in a bigger stadium. So come on, let's do the maths. Anyway, where do we go from here? Because like I said, boycotts don't work. Um, personally, in my opinion, anybody who is a Wenger out should be going to a game or trying their utmost to get to a game. And yes, I know people are gonna say, yeah, but you boycotted and you this and you that. I've just explained why. Right, now I'm gonna explain further. By you not going to a game, you now can't vent your anger, aggression, opinion. All you're gonna do is sit online and do it. Well, sitting online and doing it ain't gonna do nothing. We all know that, okay? Last season, there was protest planned, okay? And whilst I think they were a great idea, and whilst I think they were very well planned, I think that looking back at it now, it could have been done in a different way. And I'm not, I'm not trying to mug off anyone who planned them protests. Let's just get that straight. Because I fully back all of them. And, and I think everything they tried to do last season was for the good of this football club. So let's just have that right. What I think they should do, rather than protesting outside the front of the stadium or marching from Highbury to the Emirates, is after a game, there's plenty of opportunity for all of these people that want to protest to protest at the people that need to see the protest. For example, if you're marching from Highbury to the Emirates, does Arsene Wenger even know you've done that? Arsene Wenger's already in the stadium. He don't give a toss. He's in the changing room with all the players. Gazidis is in the, in the ballroom. Yeah, or in the executive lounge, whatever they want to sit in. So these people don't care because they're not seeing it. Out of sight, out of mind. Yes, it went global. Yes, it went all over news channels and outlets. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at it now saying, when a game finishes, every single one of them people has to leave the football ground. And every single one of them has come by car. So... Why not protest outside the car park? So when they're leaving, and instead of Arsene Wenger being able to get a nice cushy little number driving out with his window open, posing for pictures left, right and centre, why don't we have three, four, five, six thousand, whatever the number may be, standing outside that entrance or exit, we want Wenger out, yeah? I'm not saying be nasty, I'm just saying, get your point, points across. There's no need to be violent, there's no need to... Uh, come to physical blows with other people. Just a peaceful protest. Chant what you want to chant in a nice way, but getting your point across. Now, yes, it's heavily policed on match days, but at the same time, if there were, say, 5,000 people standing there, there's no way in a million years the police can move 5,000 people on just like that. So if we did that, every single home game, whether you go to the game or not, Turn up outside and protest. Even Gazidis will come out. Stan Kroenke won't. He probably don't even know we've got game. But Arsene Wenger has taken the piss at this football club for way too long now. And like I said at the very beginning of this, he is Stan Kroenke's puppet. Now even Gazidis, if we move on to him and look at what he does for the football club, off the pitch, 
he's one of the best in the world because he's plucked out sponsorship deals left, right and centre. So credit where it's due, he's done fantastically well off the pitch. Where he comes undone and where it all comes ravelling down for even Gazidis is when he comes out with stupid statements like he did before Leicester. Arsene Wenger was the prime candidate. He was the only person we couldn't find anyone that could do what Arsene Wenger could do. Right? Now, he don't believe that. He don't believe that. But he's getting paid two million quid a year to say it. Let's be right. They're all in it together. So when Gazidis and Wenger are leaving the stadium, the protests, in my opinion, should be there at the, at the exit of the stadium when they're coming out their car parks. Stand there with your banners and chant whatever you want to chant, as long as it's not nasty, as long as it's not personal in terms of about stuff that he's done in the past, Wenger, in terms of private life. But just get your point across. Um, one thing I will say on this as well um, that I really want to bring up is I've been on social media today and the amount of people that still back this guy, Wenger, and they, they're coming out with stuff like this now. If you back the manager, you're going to get called A, B and C. We're going to call you this. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to scare tactic people into keeping their mouth shut. Okay. Um, for example, people love him, people hate him, up to you, everyone's got an opinion. DT, last season, made it very clear that he was, he's made it clear for years that he's Wenger out. But he wanted to do something. He's brought banners out. He's been at the protests. And since he brought the banner out against Hull City um, a few years ago, the amount of abuse and death threats and name calling and threats of violence has been nothing short of embarrassing. But he's still going. He's still doing his thing. And in my opinion, full credit to the guy. Because this is what these people that back Wenger want you, to, want you to do. They want you to go hiding. They want you to stop talking about Wenger. So what they do is they put stuff out there to make you think that if you speak about Wenger then you're going to get abuse. So then you think, well, do you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to sit on the fence. Every single person who wants Wenger out of this football club needs to have a voice. It's all well and good hiding behind a little shell and saying, oh, yeah, I don't want abuse. Fuck the haters. I get abused daily. Every single day I get called a nonce, a pedo, um, an ass kisser because I'm backing the same people that have done the protests, etc. Um... I get told I'm going to get my face smashed in when I go to games. Well, guess what? I'm still here. Not one person smashed my face in. So everyone who wants to get Wenger out of this football club needs to come together. We all need to get together and get something in the pipeline to get protests going. And not protests outside the front of the stadium and walking from the marble halls down to, to the Emirates. I feel that it should be done after the game. Okay, so anybody who doesn't want to be caught up in that has already left the stadium anyway. Okay, so then when there are people stood there, it's people that are all of the same mindset. Okay, because when you're walking to the stadium from, the, uh, from Highbury to the Emirates protesting, you're getting caught up in people that don't want that to happen. They don't want you to be doing that. So you are going to get some level of abuse. Okay, at the end of the day, it's a free country, freedom of speech. Let's all pull together, stop worrying about haters, stop worrying about abuse, stop worrying about threats of violence, because that is all they are. Minor, ideal, old, idle threats, okay? Nobody's going to smash your face in. Let's have that right. Not one person is going to risk a lifetime ban for giving somebody a slap at a football match. And not only that, they're not going to do it in the most watched city in the world. There's cameras everywhere in London, if somebody comes and actually physically harms you, they're done. They will get caught. But that ain't even going to get to that. Okay? Now, like I said, I'm one of the a big, big Wenger out. Okay? And I am going to turn it up as much as I can this season. And I'm going to go to as many games as I can this season. Because I want my voice heard. I've had enough of boycotting and sitting at home. And yes, I'm not paying them money by not going. But at the same time, nothing's changing. So... Maybe I should start going to games and maybe I should start doing what I want to do and get my opinion out there and start voicing it. And if everybody else had the same mindset as what I'm now thinking, 
then there'd be a lot more people turn up to these games and turn up to these protests. Anyway, that's my piece. Um, I'm now going to wrap this video up. I want to say thanks very much to every single one of you subscribers. You've been amazing. Love all the comments. Um, even the negative ones, it makes me look, it makes me realise that, you know, yeah, I'm not all as fantastic as I think I am. Um, but yeah, appreciate that. And um, I'm going on holiday later on today, um, off to sunny Mallorca. And I'll be doing my preview for the Bournemouth game, probably the same day as Wenger drops his press conference um, for the game. So that's more than likely going to be Wednesday. So as soon as I've heard that, and heard whether there's any injuries, obviously international duty, etc. Then at some point in that day, then I'll be dropping my preview for the game. Um, in the meantime, all have a wonderful weekend. And like I said, let's get these out of our club, starting with Wenger. Because I personally believe he is a major problem, more so at this present time than Kroenke. So, yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe, like, share. Laters, peeps.